Okay, good evening, gentlemen. Hopefully no ladies will be in attendance for this one, because it is a, uh, uh, well, actually, I think ladies would probably love it, you know, if you look at those true crime videos, but we are talking about the house that Jack built, um, and I gotta say, phenomenal movie. I don't even say that as a mark of being very good. I do find it quite good, but it's one of those movies that, yeah, like, that's, it, it, in about 15, 10, 15 minutes, it gets you into it, and you're, you're totally into it for the rest of the time. And I was drawn between watching it, did I, if I missed the line, or if I couldn't hear what someone said, so I go back like 10 or 15 seconds, 20, 20 seconds, and hear it again. Also, they just, just, and then that way I'll get a little bit more of a, of a viewing experience. But what I depreciate this very precious viewing experience I've got by doing that. So I just sit there and watch it all the way through. It was one of those ones. So yes, I just marathoned this movie with not Baskin Robbins, but I did have some um, homemade McFlurry. I just crushed up the Oreos and put them in the ice cream. Uh, things aren't that desperate at home, but I just thought, is it interesting? Could I do it? And how would it taste? And it's not too different, honestly. I would say, that, I say you know, let's speak about the real Trotsky right now. The price of the McFlurry, I think it's probably over $5. If you, you, well, you can't get it as part of a meal, but if you just went there and got it, that, that would, I think it would be over $5 now. And that is, that is simply too much for a small portion of soft ice cream in a plastic cup with some things. I mean, are you really paying an extra... Three to four dollars for the chunks of Oreo or Smarties. I don't. I forgot what the other two are. That's not except. That's 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 the true travesty. That that really shows us we live in a in a world for God, but an uncaring God. And uh, perhaps Christ, when you think about it, the, the true manifestation of Christ, it was the the um, the Mc, the McSmart meal, whatever the hell it's called, the one where they give you. The cheaper one where they give you two burgers and a small drink and a small fries. And it, it's, it's miraculous and I can't understand it because how the hell do they, do they get away with... Like, I get if they would give you the fries and the chips because what... The, no, no, sorry. That, that, well, that would be, that would be the, to accommodate the diversity of, like, Americans and British. But they give, you the, they give you the fries and the drink, but they're small. But then they give you two burgers. And my understanding of fast food economics, it was always that the soda is free, the chips are verging on nothing, and they make their margins on them because of that. And the burgers are just to get people in the door. And then you can sell them a drink, and you can sell them fries, and you can sell them for a certain price, but because they come in with that other stuff. And they also fill you up more because you're getting just like oil and salt and potatoes. Um, as you would get from like a small burger, when would you do it? But apparently, no. This, this, for some reason, some reason they've worked out instead of just being at a small burger with a large fries and a large drink, and you're like, wow, I've got all this. They give you two two burgers, and a small fries and a small drink, and you're thinking, I, I have no conception of how I could possibly have got this, but I'll enjoy it while it lasts. And I think that could really be said for the film that I was going to talk about in this video and uh, life, but I will continue to just talk about McDonald's for the rest of the video. No, obviously not. Well, not obviously, uh, with, with, on my channel, I probably, that's, that's, a, that's a fear that that could happen, that I would just ramble on about McDonald's, and you would probably enjoy it at this point. However, it, we will maintain a discussion of the film. This is, to clarify, this is one of those immediate, just after watching talks. Um, I haven't, I don't want to sit and stew about it and I don't want to watch um, other people talk about it or read what other people said about it and that have it influenced my own ideas I'll just go on that so what really is so the very the simple take is that Jack and obviously spoilers Jack is a man who can't create and he copes by destroying and saying that's creation that's art and art is obviously creation and I, I guess this guy could have couldn't have just sat down and watched like, you know, some Bob Ross because in like twenty twenty minutes he'll give you a wonderful finished painting. And compared to like drawing or like painting where you don't have to get the the, the paint thinner and the it's got to be odorless paint thinner and then you've got to like put put a put a coat of like liquid white underneath and and but it's it's worth it. Cause it's a lot of fun. It is worth it. 
like all good things, but you could just go crazy and kill people. Um, and then maybe that would be, that would be a good thing. It probably wouldn't actually know. <laughs> that being said, um, do you root for the him? Yes and no. Like, like he's, he's, he's one of those, it, this is like stretching the limits of like how a character is the bad guy, but they're still likable. This is pushing it to like its utmost extreme, but he's still likable. <laughs> now, <laughs> not excessively like well, but I think I think it might just be all those scenes of like raging at people in stores and um, stuff like that, where it's just just like yeah, I I get that, I can relate to that. Uh, and you're trying to be nice to someone, and then they're kind of treating you like shit, uh, even though you want to help them out. Oh, um, th th now I'll tell you this: the main thing I was thinking about. I was just enjoying the film, I was into it, but I did think sometimes, how, do I want to talk about this? Because it was on my mind, I can't even remember why I, I wanted to do some, part, watch it in the first place. I've just kind of known about it here and there. And what surprised me, and then I settled on, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it now, because I was going to see a friend, and then they cancelled, so I'm like, well, they didn't, they didn't ca I didn't cancel, I did not get cancelled, okay, they rearranged, we, we, I got brain checked. Um, but... I put the film on, okay, this is a great opportunity to watch the film, I do it, it's late at night, um, right atmosphere, and the title comes up, and it's the title, and then it's like Lars von Trier, and I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't know, I know this guy, and I didn't know he made this movie, and then I realized, I, I haven't watched any of his other um, pictures, uh, I've watched the one where it's like Austin Powers, but a female, for maybe like a half hour or so. Um, and I didn't hate it, but I, I don't think it was, I didn't, I didn't finish it for whatever reason. I don't even know when I watched it, I mean, I just, I, um, maybe, maybe that's why I didn't have a choice to see the whole thing. But I remember not hating it, but it's only even striking me in, in the same way. So this is the first time I've ever sat down and watched a whole of his films. And this is where it, it brought in the, the apprehension. Because if I do a video about it, I'm like, oh, like, everyone, everyone, everyone will be like, oh, you're the guy who's like, oh, I thought you were the, you know, I thought you were kind of base, but here you are enjoying this kind of like very like nihilistic, uh, some some lowbrow people would say it's some some mid midwits, really just like a midwit. Midwit can be, um, <laughs> this is kind of a hard truth that people don't want to admit, but midwits are not quite, not as common uh, um, on the quote unquote right as they are on the quote unquote left, but it's 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 more than you think. And a lot of people say this is the gen, and I mean, it, it could be that, but I guess it's the gen as like that portrait of the guy. Um, I think it's Titan eating his son, and then obviously all like the nudity and sexuality and, you know, um, classical portraits and whatever. And is that the gen? I mean, maybe. I was actually thinking they were doing these this montage of these portraits, and um, for everybody, like, you live, you cannot, you cannot take a live, and the passion, that is what makes art, is about affirming life. So you could you could say you kind of have almost two sort of um, moralities sort of contrasting here. That that would be the other thing is that you have Jack who is sort of a amoral master Nietzschean um, existential kind of again denying in any of this sort of stuff, but appreciating um, art what he sees and, and understanding that there's an interplay of life and not moralizing it and um, Virgil, yeah, I won't say Virgil because again, obviously, I mean they're doing a um, what's it's called, divine, <laughs> divine comedy, or Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno, yeah, it's the first book in the in the Divine Comedy, but people don't really think about the other two, which again shows into sort of an interesting aspect of human psychology, uh, with like the um, focusing on the hell aspect so much, and then you know people like interesting and like interested in serial killers in real life and so on and so forth um or like gory horror movies um which i'm not opposed to any of those things i'm not i can understand i can critique them but i'm not i'm not sitting on a high horse about it but then you know you've got to also think that there are you know the feel good uh things you know for every saw there's a there's a hallmark channel the most recent saw movie was very good um when did that come out? 
that must have been last year. Damn, it's oh, I, I guess they 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 well they used to do them like every year. Um, and I think they should just get on it because I mean Tobin Bell isn't gonna live forever, and I think he's great in that role. Um, and it's kind of slock, but it's it's slightly elevated slock, and it's but it's slock enough you can still enjoy it as slock. But it's a little bit elevated, so I can I can I can stomach being there. I don't have to watch it like ironically, like when I was um, dragged along to Five Nights at Freddy's one time. And then there was a few other people who were not watching it ironically, and it was a very, very entertaining experience for me because of that. But <laughs> but that's that's worse. But is it as worse as watching the pretentious arty film? Which saves itself from not being too pretentious because it is it is like funny at times and it's interesting at times and it's 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 a good movie to watch. It's not too out there. But when it is out there, I like it. The only thing I was at the, the some of the stuff when they're in like going through hell and there's like this interesting imagery they had done more maybe like it's animated, or it would add like some interesting like film effects because they they do this where they they kind of in. I really like the one when it's like on like a HD camera where they're going through the cave for a bit. That was kind of a cool way to do that. Like instead of getting fancy, you go ultra like gritty and and kind of warm in filmmaking. Um, but other times I would have liked it a little bit more than then just being in a CGI world but they're like realistic characters trying to look in a realistic place if they do more stuff like models or get a bit more um abstract that's what i'm gonna get a little bit more abstract with it uh but yeah in, in regards to the, the violence in the film uh that's that's i mean that's the thing that happens in life um it's a bit gross and i mean it's it's a weird <laughs> I think the scene, well, again, the scene being the most distressing, I guess also when he's, like, mutilating the, the child's corpse. Um, see, this is why I don't want to talk about this, because I'll be, like, this kind of, this sick fuck, oh, how could you take anything out of this? This is so awful. And it's like, yes, but it's it's like, you could, we can still, there, there is, like, this is a good way that you could always, those people are like, oh, it's so horrid. And I think I've actually said this previously with other of these movies that, like, oh, extreme freak-out gross movies. And I'm like, this is just, I'm not even denying it, there was no artistic, method that there's no theme that the or ideas that the, the filmmakers are trying to get across but they're overshadowing it by and i won't name names but they're overshadowing it by the 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 graphic content and that just kind of cheapens the whole thing it's a difference between like a tasteful like love scene and you know something where it's it's like uh american pie or something you know <laughs> where there's like there's some you could say oh this isn't this isn't just um I don't even know if you have to, do you have to say corn? Is, is that just the thing now? Is that just like what the kids are saying, what the zoomies are saying? Or does your video, I mean, obviously, I mean, the things I say in these videos is not going to get over, but yes, in pornography, we'll use the fancy term. That's, there's no pretense of art there, but then there's this step down where it's kind of like, oh, it's technically like a real movie, but then there's all this stuff and stuff. But then we have, you kind of go past that and it's like, it's like when people say oh it's for the story and it's for the plot and it's just it's just like some woman with her top off and then she gets beheaded <laughs> or something it's generally not that trite but then, then it acts at that level where that kind of does elevate it does become arty enough to sort of want it quite a harsh critique on hunters like yeah this idea you can have this abstract that it's actually more appropriate to shoot the the younger um deer it's more it's more humane to shoot the younger deer because you shoot the the older deer, you shoot the mother deer, and then she dies. If she gets away and dies, then the 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 fawns will probably probably die too. So it's more humane to shoot for the youngest deer, and then you see that that abstract like, oh, that makes sense. It's like that. It's like that. Um, that saying. I don't know if anyone else has heard it, but it's the one where it's like some guy and he said, oh, if you really love life. You grab an axe when you're in the lifeboat. You grab an axe and you start hacking at the hands of the people who are trying to pull themselves out of the freezing water. That's what you do if you really want to save lives. And and you know and it's like, and it's like yeah, that's kind of an interesting. I, I get what that person is saying, but if you saw that demonstrated in real life, it would be like horrific. And it's kind of the same thing with the scene in the film. Um, so that's that's kind of brilliant too, contrasting like an abstract morality, which verbs could have, and then bring that into the real world, and seeing how that could actually well, not really. And obviously, it's different with human beings because we assume human beings have more 
Well, I guess I guess if a dear mother has an emotional attachment, I mean, if they're are they self aware to what degree of self awareness is? Um, that's a whole other thing. Oh, and I just want to say the reason why he he I think the reason why he doesn't like hunting is because there is no artistic. Um, it's just it's just the the thrill of the kill and the hunt, but it's not the way he he does with these these killings. He has like oh it's an idea where it's artistic. Um, before I forget, yeah, there's also the aside where and I don't know if this is true, but they they go into talking about Albert Speer, and obviously it's not from it's not from like a normy perspective of that. Uh, you know, group of that time and place in history, but it's 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 not quite totally. It's not a hundred percent normal. It's not a hundred percent kosher. It's only semi-certified kosher. Uh, but but obviously, you know, it's it's so on and so. And the tree and the guys are saying, oh, there was there was some libtard in 1752, and then he came up with all the good things and the words that make you feel good, like democracy and humanity and stuff. And then, and then a hundred years later, there were some bad guys who did bad things for no reason in that same place. Which I don't even know if that's that's true to me, but I don't know. Maybe that tree is actually. I mean, I guess I, like who knows if the tree is the tree is there. I don't. I think the tree, if that was some historically significant tree, it would be in a park or something. But I, I don't know. Um, But he is the same with Spear, and he says, apparently, and again, I don't know if this is true, but I'm sticking to that idea where I don't want to have anything else clouding my impression of the film. I just want to have what the film laid down for me. And it was this this idea where he designed the buildings that they were building. That's a, that's a very dumb statement. <laughs> and they built. They're still there. and I've, I've seen them, and I showed them in the film. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But apparently those are designed in such a way that they will so their age in a thousand years. Some of the materials are stronger and weaker. So that they, they I guess they won't just collapse. They'll just fall down. But um they'll degrade in a certain way that they'll look kind of like the ruins of the Greco Roman age. Um uh, what's and and then I I, I can think about it now. They probably when they built those things, they probably weren't thinking that oh, in a long time it'll look a certain way. That probably just happened. I mean, maybe they did. I Again, obviously they were kind of, you know, uh, they did have an, a, a sense of history in the future. Because we do. So therefore, they must have had to. I probably just did. I'm sure there's some historical source for that. But, you know, let's just take the based one-liner. And they... And I, I, I guess they, just, they probably just wanted to build a building that works, at least most of the time. Maybe they didn't. And they weren't sure if it was going to happen. I have no actual point to be fair. I just think I'm just thinking like I'm pretty sure when they they built those old buildings, they just build them in a certain way, and now they look like this. And that might actually be a great critique of all of the character in the film. Like no, you're just like a psycho killer, and you just like killing people. That's kind of it. Like I don't want to care about your like manifesto or reason or whatever. Anything, anything, anything's like like this when these you have these like someone just like oh it was it was a thing it was a or like some someone who goes up and just shoots a bunch of random people and it's like a for political thing that they're saying. And, but it's kind of just, it's actually just sort of like your antisocial instinct mixed with a sort of like quasi-suicidality. <sighs> but yeah, I can speak of this picture a lot. Um, I guess the only thing I could complain about was some of the... Um, not prosthetics, but like some of the the models they use for corpses, they didn't look totally real, which is like okay because again we're not watching. We, 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 this is the other thing. Um, Millennial Worlds talks about this. They said that you shouldn't have to actually have like the twenty million dollar budget an episode TV show that they do now on streaming services and stuff, and that he prefers the um just like the old. It's called like multi camera, and I'm also that was an interesting thing. But I think what happens is they basically literally have like. A couple cameras set up, and they're like stationary. And it's like those shows where they they have the they act the scene out, um, on like a set, and then it will just like it'll just like cut to cut to cut to cut, and they don't have. 
the camera doesn't really move around or much, and it's it's all it's all again on the stage. And the stage certainly, I mean, especially from that time, the time he was referring to, seventies, eighties, brilliant. It wouldn't be this amazing setup. But he said that what was was good about that was because it it, it made the the actual screen work, the so the script work. You had to write very well because you didn't have all this flashiness. And obviously, it was meant to for like a, a higher level of. Maybe this would be a bit snobby, but if it's snobby to say that there's that, that there's media that has a little bit more going on than the streaming, the average streaming show today, the average content, it's not even like a, a show anymore, you know, this is like the old theater show, the old playbill or whatever, play show, it's just a, it's just content. But you had to, you had to, had to, you had to appeal to people's brain, really. You have to be big brained. Small, small budget, big brain. And I kind of got the same feeling. Um, again, with with this, where it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like the violence. It wasn't this, this, this sort of this. Oh, look at look at this happen. Like oh, you, hello, you're in a trap, and you have to pull your eyeball out, or your head will explode because you you jaywalked or something. I, I, you know, it's not um. It's this kind of, it's this kind of, the, and it's flavor, and it does be realistic. Because this is like a thing. This is stuff that happens. Bad stuff can happen. Uh, I did think the part of the ducky. I was like, oh my god, oh, oh, oh no! I was like looking away, and I'm like, okay, they didn't do that for real. They didn't do that for real. And then a half hour later, like, okay, I've got to check because this, this, this guy's known to be like a, a fucked up weirdo. So maybe. Maybe 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 they actually did do that, but they're not gonna do that. But I had to, I had to stop the film and look it up just to just to, just so I could focus on the picture again. <laughs> uh, n- none of the stuff having to the people bothered me. It's that classic critique where it's like you can kill a hundred people in the most horrible way, but like a dog gets mildly injured, the bad guy like kicks a dog. <laughs> it's like the end of the world. I'm not advocating kicking dogs or like you know killing sixty people and you know mutilating and stockpiling the bodies. I'm not saying. Don't do that. I will say this though in regards to like, I was talking about Saw, kind of like the final, not the epilogue, I guess he had the final, the third act. I'm like, is he going to be able to do it though? Is he actually going to be able, is the bullet going to go through all of those heads? I don't, I don't know. And he's like driving around. I'm like, I'm thinking, I probably should be watching this because it's coming through a sender, but at the that back of my mind, I was thinking, I'm thinking like, is, is he actually going to do it? Is he actually going to do it? Is it going to work? I don't know. I just kind of want to see it. Um, And the other thing I thought, I, the other thing I thought was the the scene with his the woman, and he says he has he has like feelings for her, and um, you know you know what goes on in that scene. <laughs> and then I think, and then I thought, well, that again, that's actually the that's that's that does say something that because you could be kind of looking like, ooh, look at this, look at this, ooh, oh, ooh, whoa, ooh, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't even know if that's an impression of. But then that's kind of like, oh, yeah, wait, hang on. Are you, you're kind of, that's kind of demonstrating that you have these kind of lower, these sort of like base instincts to like, for like killing and reproduction and, and stuff. And that's kind of, you know, you're, we're not so different, you and I. That's kind of, <laughs> and I, I thought, yeah, that's, no, that's actually, that's actually okay there. That's actually okay. It's not voyeuristic. Um, and not excessively voyeuristic, I suppose. I mean, I'll be, I, I don't think that was the point of the, the scene, but I, I can understand how, it will always kind of become that. Um, it could be a little bit intriguing if you. I was going to make a pun, but I've I've restrained myself. The ending. I was. It was also. Um, God, I was going to say one thing. Well, I was watching this film, and then then I'm getting right to the end, and it's like, uh, error, error. We can't play the end of the movie. I'm like, oh my God, no. But the way it ended, I would actually. Would that have been better? I don't... God, would that have been better? Maybe... Maybe... Because the part that that happened at... And afterwards, I'm thinking... I tried it again. And I thought, okay. If it doesn't work... I mean, that would suck. But I can kind of accept that. Because that's like kind of a good ending. And then... Sometime down the road, I'm sure I'll get a chance to see the act, see the ending. But the scene that it crapped out on me was the one where they go up to the window and he's like looking through the thing and there's the fields. I'm like, oh, that's the fields of Elysium, but we, we can't go in. 
the you know Elysians closed, fields closed. <laughs> but uh, and yeah, and there's actually, and then he, and then he just some tears came down, and I like, damn, that that scene, and I didn't really think much of, probably because it's like immediately followed by what I was like, like the the one scene I was like looking away at, um, <laughs> like covering my eyes slightly. I didn't think much of that that part where like, oh, I love people doing the working in the fields and stuff. And again, this is why I like doing this live because I've just said that. Yeah, I think that gets back to kind of a fundamental thesis that that he he appreciates much more the creative work of tilling the land and farming, but he can't ever do it. And then and then we got to. And then that's why he can't get into the fields. He could never get into the fields. So I guess even though it's you know it's a Catholic story, it, perhaps maybe it's a it's a Presbyterian. Uh, theme, but yeah, no, very. Um, that was just like, damn, that 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 would have been, as opposed to like literally having him like, like just falling down into a void, like ah. Um, and I thought, is that is that is going to be the end of it? Um, but then we get the little, the 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 ties it together with the, the shot of the the negative. I was, I'm not a photography nerd, but yeah, like that's the film negative where it's all like grayscale I'm kind of like oh yeah that's that's kind of that's 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 okay that's a pretty good way to end it I thought he was going to make it all the way around but um he just keeps going he's I like that he says it's like uh I've heard he literally says well I wouldn't do it but you can and it's like I'll, I'll try it and he just he keeps going he keeps going further into hell he, he doesn't he doesn't stop himself which again you can make another Christian thing there where it's like the, the difference between the good and the evil man is your um your self control. It's not like a, it's not like this thing we would have in the Enlightenment sense where man is like inherently good, but then there's these outside forces. No, he's like he's inherently bad, but he has to he can use his his reason to stop himself. And there's obviously that thing. I had to go by that like, you know, word for word to to get it. But the the part where he's talking about the soul is um the mind and and the body is like the things of the world and heaven and hell. Oh no! He said the yeah, the soul is heaven and the body is hell, and they're connected. Um, which is definitely interesting. Great end song. That's the other thing I like. The good end credit song. Maybe people could complain it was a bit much, but I think like with the disco that they would stop playing the disco or whatever it was, that was used very um, appropriately for the for the. They used it at the right time. But yeah, I do, I think a little bit more, yeah, I do like, I do like my ending where, yeah, he could, he, but like that's, that's the hell that he's just, he's just stuck in that room and he's looking out at the fields, but he can never get in. He's literally, he wants to return to Europa, but he can't ever do it. And perhaps maybe that's the hell all of us will have to endure. <laughs>